something that like all the laws in the country have to kind of abide by so it's kind of like the it's like a written text that basically is like a um a layer or like a beginning slate for everything else like pile up on so everything has to abide by and kind of align with it yes that's a great answer yeah it's typically formed after some sort of revolution or big event and as you say like a starting point and it sets out all the things that other laws have to follow yeah any other ideas maybe in relation to the rights that it gives you key rights maybe you've heard in america you know in relation to gun control people say well in the constitution it says that i can bear arms and maybe it's a book where different laws and rules are written in order to follow them yes yeah that's true okay so now if we move on to the next slide we'll get on to the the main topic today we're going to be looking at written versus unwritten constitutions so a written constitution uh, most countries have these and we're going to use the us as an example so as some of you have said from your answers, a written constitution is when most of the rules for governance are contained in one sort of written document. And it sets out the relationships between the citizen and the state and between the different branches. So in the US, you have the Senate, the court and the president. And it sets out the framework about how these institutions are going to interact with each other, how they're going to balance each other out, because obviously there's some actions that the president can't take without backing from Congress. Um, it also contains provisions for amendments. If we have a, a document, we want to change it, right? We want to update it. It can't be the same from 1700 to 2021. And uh, as you said in, in one of your answers, it's, it's known as supreme law. It takes priority over any conflicting state law. The constitution is the primary document. So that's a brief outline of, of the US situation. And now over to the UK. The UK has what's described by some people as an unwritten constitution. But this technically isn't true. I've, I've used written and unwritten for simplicity, but technically the UK constitution is written, it's just uncodified. Well, what does uncodified mean? It means that the different documents that make up the UK constitution have not been collated or compiled into one document, like in the US situation. There's various documents spread over all over the place really that make up the UK constitution. So some examples, um, laws that parliament passes, some, some of those statutes are really important. Um, so um, statutes in relation to the different regions of the UK, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, the Human Rights Act about the rights that we have as citizens, um, European Union legislation that governed our relationships with the European Union. There's also key cases that are decided by the courts and some of those are given constitutional status. There's also something called conventions, which governs how the actors interact with each other, but they're based on tradition and history and practice rather than written in a, in a solid, in a single document. So having given that brief outline of written and unwritten, or as we now know, uncodified constitutions, we're going to have a debate about the advantages and disadvantages of these types of constitutions. So opening it up again, what do you think are the advantages and disadvantages of written and unwritten constitutions? Could um, in unwritten constitutions, because there are so many, could maybe they kind of like juxtapose each other and so oppose each other, which can cause a bit of confusion. So something in one place that could be constitutional, could be unconstitutional in another place, which can make things very confusing and make it harder to make decisions because you need to choose which one to overrule um, based on the situation and how important it is, I guess. Exactly right. Yeah. So you're saying there could be two provisions that conflict. And what do you do? They're in separate places. It's not as clear as it would be in, in a written constitution. Any other ideas? What would be a good thing about having a written document, one clear document that lays out all the rights, all the amendments, everything in one place? <laughs> It would be easily accessible and like clearer to understand compared to an unwritten constitution. Yep, that's a great answer. Yes, definitely clearer, definitely easier for the citizen to access. You can sort of Google it and type it in and it's all in one place. And well, what would you say are the disadvantages of a written constitution? If it's sort of fixed in a written document. Some of the laws in the written constitution 
should it could be about people's fans and all that sort of thing. Yes, that's that's brilliant. Yes, obviously it's harder to change if it's in a written constitution. There is provision for amendments, but it's it's harder to do than if it's unwritten. So now turning to the unwritten, what would you say are the disadvantages? It's sort of the, the inverse of what you said for the written one. Unwritten one, not up to interpretation. Hey Ray, can you increase your volume, please? I don't know what's wrong with the um the road an unwritten constitution. An unwritten constitution would be more open to interpretation, meaning a lawyer could manipulate the law more easily. Okay, yes, yeah, so you're saying because it's less clear, there's more room for sort of abuse potentially. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And any advantages to an unwritten one? Maybe what you were saying before about it's easier to amend, so therefore perhaps more flexible. Yeah, the flexible. Yeah, that's great. So I think you've all identified the, the key points. What I had here in my notes, the advantages for a written one, it's clear, it's in one document, easy to access, easy for citizens to, come, to become aware of their rights and how they're governed but it's harder to change. The amendment process is a lot harder. There's a series of checks you have to go through and also it imposes the ideals of the 1700s when the constitution was written, sort of into today. Uh, in terms of an unwritten constitution, it can be unclear, it's not streamlined. It can be difficult to access. There's a transparency issue, but it is more flexible, more responsive. And so you can sort of change it to fit the modern times. Next slide, please. 